Hey, I'm Steve Prince for Gibson's Learn and Master Guitar, and welcome to this month's video tip. Now today we're going to build chords all over the neck using some simple shapes. Now this is often called the caged system or the caged approach to thinking about how chords are formed. Some of these chord forms are going to be familiar to you, but some of them probably are going to be a little bit new. Let's first start looking at the C in the caged form, C-A-G-E-D. Let's look at some C forms. So I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Here's a C chord, regular old open C chord. Now, what I'm going to do is you'll notice in this chord I've got a couple of open strings, this third string that's open and this first string that's open. Well, if I switch my fingers around, and instead of using the third, the second, and the first, I'm going to try and get my first finger free, so he's going to eventually cover a bar that's going to fix up, uh, cover these open strings. So I'm going to have to switch my fingers around. I'm going to play my pinky on the C, my third finger on the G, and then my second finger on uh, the C. And now I'm going to shift this whole form up a half step and then put my first finger down, barring that where those open strings would have been. Now I have a D flat chord. Here's still the root. But now look what happens here. This chord works just as well for a movable form. So I've taken this open form, switched my fingers around, move it a half step up, and I end up with a form that I can move around. This is a C sharp or a D flat. If I wanted an E flat in that form, I can move it up there, maybe an F. See what I'm doing? If I move it all the way back down, I'm back to the C. Switch my fingers around, I've got a normal C. Well, that's the C. Let's go to the next one, C, A. I can do the same thing on an A chord form. Well, it starts out with an open A. Now, what do I have open in that? I've got a fifth string open, I've got my uh, first string open. Well, if I moved, let's say I did the bar version of this, did it like that. And now I'm going to move this a half step up. I'm going to bar it with my third finger. So now I have a B flat chord, and the rest of these are barred. If I move that up, this would be a C chord. This would be a D chord. Look what I have here. I have my first finger on the root, fifth string, and then I've got my third finger barring the uh, second, fourth, and uh, third string. I'm using that. That is a movable form. Just like the A was a movable form, or a A was an A major, if I move it up a half step, that's B flat major. Well, it works in all kinds of things. If I have an A seventh, and I switch my fingers around, maybe put my third and fourth there, move it up a half step, and bar where the open strings would have been, I have a B flat seven. And I start getting into, you'll notice these are all of the fifth string bar forms if you're following along with us in the Learn and Master Guitar course, if you've gotten to that level, which is around session seven and eight. And that's how that works. So all of those forms, an A minor and A minor seventh, those can all be turned into a B minor or a B flat minor, B flat minor seventh. All of those work there. Well, let's go to the next one, which would be G forms. We've covered C forms, covered A forms. Now let's look at G forms. Well, if I have my open G chord here, and let's just take maybe this, uh, the middle five strings there, and I'm gonna kind of mute uh, this fifth string, take my second finger off. So I have a G, then a muted string, then open D, open G, open B. Put my pinky over here, move up a half step, bar what would be the open strings. Now I have an A flat chord. To see how that's the same chord as this, I just moved it up a half step. Well this is great. Now I can move this up. It also frees up my fingers to do a very typical um, rock groove. Like the, here I'm in A. And I can put my second finger on the uh, D my third finger on the F sharp there, end up with a D chord with an A in the bass. Just like I do a G and a C, I can do the A and the D. And so I can move those around as well. Well, we've covered three or four of them now. C, A, G's. Let's look at the E family. Well, here's my E chord. If I switch my fingers around, Use my third finger, my pinky, and my second finger, then scoot it up a half step, bar what would have been the open strings, 
I end up with an F chord. You'll notice these are the six string bar chord forms that we cover in session uh, uh, seven and eight. So I can do F7, just as this is the same as E7. I can do uh, E minor. I move that up a half step. I get F minor. Continue moving it up. I get to have an A, or B flat, or C minor. And what I'm trying to get you to think about is this C minor is the same form if I just move it all the way down as an E minor form, just with open strings. All right, the last family I want, we we're going to get to is ones that may be a little bit newer for you. This is the D chord family. So I start off with an open D chord here. Now if I switch my fingers around, put my second finger on the, on the A there, put my pinky on the D, my third finger on the F sharp, and then move this whole picture up a half step. Put my first finger where the open string would have been. A little bit of a stretch there. I end up with an E flat chord. I move it up another half step, it's an E chord and an F chord. And it works the same way. If I wanted to do a D minor, I have a D, an F, or excuse me, an A, a D, and an F. With my third pinky and second finger, if I move that up, put my first finger down, I end up with an E flat minor or an E minor form. So you'll come out with some different forms. What if I did the seventh form? Here's a D seventh. If I switch my fingers around, do third, second, and pinky, move a half step up, I have an E flat seven or an E seventh. So you see all of these open forms can be turned, not all of them, but most of them can be turned into movable forms with just a little bit of thought. Well, there you go. There are some ways of looking at these new forms. Now, many of the open chords can be turned into movable chords with just a little thought and some adjustments in the fingerings. And, and really going through the mental process of figuring out these new movable forms is a good practice that's going to help you visualize the neck of the guitar in a new way. Well, have fun incorporating some of these new forms into your own playing. And before we go, here's a few last minute quick announcements. Hey everybody, what's up? I just wanted to give you a couple of last minute announcements. Tonight we've got a live lesson at 7 p.m. That's 7 p.m. Central Time. And we've got a special guest, Pete Hutlinger. Pete Hutlinger is an amazing uh, fingerstyle guitarist. And we're going to be talking about solo guitar, which is one of the things that uh, Pete is known for, taking a song and rearranging it so you have all the parts in a solo guitar arrangement. Pete's played for Faith Hill and Jimmy Buffett and used to play with John Denver way back when. It's going to be an amazing time, so make plans to be with us. We're also going to be giving away an acoustic guitar and an amp and some accessories to go along with that. All right, now the next live lesson after tonight is going to be Tuesday, uh, February 21st, and we're going to be talking about notes in the first position. So if you're, if you're kind of on the beginning of your journey and you're anywhere from like sessions one through sessions four in the course and you're wrestling with learning notes, then this uh, live lesson on the 21st is for you. I'm going to be giving you some resources as well as some good tips on uh, conquering all of that stuff. Now, in Gibson Skills House, we put up a bunch of new lessons in, in Gibson Skills House. I put up a great lesson on getting the most from your strumming. If you're learning about strumming and want to get your strumming a little bit more smooth, then you might want to check out that video tip. We also put up two new lessons, Reeling in the Ears by Steely Dan and I Fought the Law. Two great song lessons. So those links are in this newsletter as well. So take a look at these great tips. Now, remember to think about, as we go through this month, remember to think about these chord shapes that I talked about in this newsletter tip and how you can apply them into your own playing. Just spend a little bit of time uh, working on the fingerings of those, getting those down, but also thinking about how these chords and their shapes are moving around on the neck. So I hope you guys are doing great. Have a great month, and we'll see you next time.